Member for Blacksland. Well, thank you, Deputy Speaker. And well might the minister say, "Welcome to the real world." Uh, we say, "Welcome to the world of broken promises." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today is a day that this government will rue for a very long time. Today, the Abbott government is breaking one of the most important and biggest promises that they made in the last election campaign. This government has barely been in office for three months, a little over 90 days, and yet they are breaking promises left, right and centre. First on debt, then on boats, two weeks ago on education and now on the NBN. And this is a betrayal, this is a broken promise that will hang like an albatross around this minister's neck. It is an unforgivable broken promise, Deputy Speaker, and this government will be punished by the electorate for it. Remember the press conference with Sonny Bill Williams in April of this year. Press conference with virtual Sonny Bill and the Minister and the now Prime Minister, where the, prom where the Prime Minister uttered these immortal words. Under the coalition by 2016, there will be minimum download speeds of 25 megabits. Not anymore. We will deliver a minimum 25 megabits by the end of our first term. Well, today, Deputy Speaker, they are breaking that promise. Before the election, they promised no excuses. Now, today, we get a tawdry list of excuses from this minister. Before the election, they said no surprises. Well, today, we get the worst of all surprises from this government. Remember the words of this Prime Minister when he said, I don't intend on making promises I won't keep. Well, he's just broken a whopper today. One of the biggest and most important promises that this government made, and the minister, from the look on his face, knows it, to the Australian people at this last election. And what it means is that you cannot believe anything that this government That's says. Right. Not on debt, not on boats, not on education, not on the NBN. Nothing they say is worth two bob. Well, Here's the truth. Deputy Speaker, I seek leave to table the NBN Co's assessment of the Coalition's broadband policy prepared during the caretaker period. Leave granted? No. Of course oh, well. Leave is not granted. The Minister for Transparency has just told us exactly what we need to know. Exactly. This was never about getting us all the information. This was always a stitch up. And if he was ever interested in the truth, he'd be prepared to allow us to table this document now. Unless you're going to grant it, don't interject. In a point of order. The honourable member has the accused minister. the authors of the NBN Co report of, of, of authoring a stitch-up. He has accused Cordamentha, Deloitte, Boston Consulting, Consulting minister, Group of minister, a stitch-up, and the member minister, should withdraw. Order. Minister, that's not a point of order. There's no point of order. Deputy Speaker, this is the real strategic review of the coalition's dodgy second-rate NBN plan. It's the unadulterated, unamended, uncensored version of the coalition's plan, written before the minister sacked the experts at the NBN and put his mates in charge. And it's the report that the minister doesn't want the people of Australia to see. The secret advice given to the minister in his first weeks in the job, but never released until today. Now, the minister says this is an old report. Well, it says it's dated Friday, the 20th of September. A 154-page document, very detailed, and funny enough, it doesn't say what the minister just said. It paints a very, very different picture. It is a scathing document, scathing of the coalition's plan. It says, one, building the NBN in two stages is the wrong approach and, quote, is not recommended. It says it would cost more and take longer. Two, it says the coalition's election promise that all Australians will have access to speeds of 25 megabits by 2016 is, quote, unlikely to happen. Well, we now, now we know why they said that out of the minister's own mouth. Three, it says the coalition's plan will result in lower revenues of up to 30 per cent, which will impact on the ability of NBN Co to raise debt. Four, it says no one knows how much it will cost to fix Telstra's old copper network so it can be used for the NBN, 
not Telstra, not the government, not NBN Co. Five, it also says that the cost of maintaining the copper network is estimated between $600 million and $900 million per year. That's between $6 billion and $9 billion over the next decade just to maintain the old copper network. Six, it says the coalition's promise of minimum speeds of 50 megabits per second by 2019 can't be guaranteed using copper. And seven, it says the coalition's slower speeds would compromise the provision of telehealth, distance education and other business applications. So all up, all up, what does this report say? It says the coalition's plan is a dud. It was a dud in April and it is a dud now. More than a dud, it is a litany of betrayal by this government who promised one thing before the election and now, after having perpetrated a deceit on the Australian people, is now breaking their promise today. What we, what we know in this document and what has been proven by what the minister has said today is that now the NBN will take longer to build than they promised before the election. It will make less money and it won't meet the needs of business or families. And in the end, we're going to have to come back and finish the job. Now, the minister has said a lot about costs in his speech, and we shouldn't be surprised. But remember this. The capital cost of building the NBN has been outlined in the NBN Co's corporate plans. In the corporate plan 2012-15, it was $37.4 billion. In the corporate plan in 2013-16, leaked to the Australian Financial Review, it was $37.4 billion. In version 13 of the corporate plan, prepared by NBN Co, given to the board on the 20th September, sitting on the minister's desk right now, but not released, it says it's $37.4 billion. Now, all of these accounts, ticked off not just by the company, not just by the board, including two members of the board who were there in September and have been there for all of these corporate plans, but also audited and verified by the Australian National Audit Office, by Ernst & Young and by KPMG. So costs verified in government, finance, treasury, these other organisations, and now suddenly it's all changed. Suddenly the experts have been sacked, people have been brought back in, and we've got a different answer. Now, now, now some people might be surprised. They might be surprised that all of this information is now out of date, but I'm not. For the last few weeks, I've been warning the Australian public that this would happen. I did it again on the doors today, and I've been proven correct today. You only have to look at what Brad Orgel said in a column that he wrote for the Financial Review a few weeks ago to know why this is the case. And this is what Mr Orgel said, quote, selective data conservative assumptions and extrapolations out to 2021 could be formulated to argue why the NBN might have comprehensively blown out its costs and not achieved its objective. It would be a continuation of the coalition's attack from opposition on NBN management and board, including threatening a royal commission of inquiry. In other words, change the assumptions, get a different result. Exactly. You don't have to think hard to see how this has been done. Mike Quigley, the former CEO that the minister liked so much, said this last week, quote, rates to build the fibre network based on the existing design and architecture were rising, but those rate increases would not have produced a cost increase because we had identified and validated network and design changes that would have offset those increases. He goes on, which is why I find it incomprehensible to hear the suggestion that the increases in LNDN rates should be built into forward projections and cost reductions that have already been identified should not be. Now, here's the killer. Unless, of course, your objective is to try to confirm a preconceived position. Now, the minister, the minister in his contribution talked a little bit about copper and the work that's been done in the strategic review to cost that copper. The fact is, in this report, there's no detail about the exact amount that it would cost to fix and then to maintain the copper network. Three weeks ago, the minister said at a comms day conference, quote, we want hand on heart, true, realistic, achievable options 
prudently costed and scoped on which we can make weighty decisions. Now, my argument to the parliament today is that this report doesn't do this. It fails to provide this information. It, pro it fails to provide the exact information we need on how much it will cost to fix and then to maintain the old copper network. It gives estimates. It gives international, uh, international comparisons. It gives, as the minister has just said, conservative assumptions, but doesn't reveal them and doesn't provide us with the information we need. Well, this report that the minister won't let me table in parliament does. It tells us that the cost of maintaining the old copper network could be between $600 million and $900 million a year. And that, a year, a year, a year. So, so between six and $10 billion to maintain the old copper network over the next dec decade. My argument to the parliament is, wouldn't that money be better invested in building a fibre network than keeping going the old Thank copper network? Know. Now, the most important thing today, the most important thing in the report, the most important thing in the contribution the minister has made today, is the admission that he is breaking a promise to the Australian people. Now, this is not the only broken promise that he's, that he's made today, but it is worth remembering that it's still on the Liberal Party's website. It might not be now. It was when I came down to the parliament. This is the Liberal Party's website. Download speeds of between 25 and 100 megabits per second by the end of 2016. Not well, not happening. Not anymore. Not anymore. But it, as I said, it's not the only broken promise here. The minister has also said that he's going to pare back the number of houses that are going to get fibre to the node. In the policy that he put out before the election, he said fibre to the node, 8,968,000 people will get fibre to the node. You know this is true. 71% of the population now gone. All the rest of those people are going to have to rely on the HFC network. The minister said that he's going to fill the gaps there. But will it be an open access network? And who is going to pay to connect the coax from the pole to people's house? Is it you? Is it NBN Co? Or is it the people who live in those houses? And if they do, well, then who's going to pay that extra money? The minister has promised that this would be a faster, cheaper NBN. A faster, cheaper NBN. What we're getting here is a slower, potentially more expensive NBN. Slower because internet speeds will be slower under this model than it would be under ours. Slower because this minister has just broken a promise to deliver it by 2016. And potentially dearer because people in the bush are going to pay more than people in the city. This is the biggest and most important infrastructure project in Australia. And remember this, we sit on the edge of what will be the biggest middle class that the world has ever seen. Our challenge in this parliament is to make the most of it. We often call this the Asian century. It's also a digital century. The wealthiest countries in the decades ahead will be the smartest countries, the countries with the best educated workforces, with the best access to information and with the infrastructure to drive this. That's why the NBN is so important. It is the engine that drives jobs, creates companies, builds productivity, increases trade, makes us a stronger economy and a fairer country. It will help to build the Australia of our imagination. Now, because of this, because the NBN is so important, it's important that it is done right. And that means using fibre, not copper, which we're going to have to come back and replace down the track. Now, the minister keeps telling us what the old decaying economies of Europe are doing. Well, that might be right. They might be investing and in maintaining their copper, but we're not part of Europe. We're part of Asia, the dynamic and growing Asian region. And this region is investing in fibre. Japan, South Korea, Singapore, all investing in fibre to the premises. So is New Zealand, and so should we. Otherwise, we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage, left behind with a second-class, second-rate national broadband network and, we learn today, one that won't be delivered on time. You know, on, of all days, on days when we just find out that Holden is shutting its doors, we should be thinking ahead, thinking to the future, yes. thinking of where we invest to make sure we've got a strategic advantage and compete in the Asian century to set ourselves up for the future, and this government is not doing that. I've said this before, but it's worth saying again. When Robert Menzies was in opposition, in 1949, he was one of the biggest critics of the Snowy Hydro scheme. He criticised it uphill and down dale. 
Two months before the 1949 election, Menzies refused to attend the launch of the Snowy Hydro scheme. But when he became Prime Minister, he changed his mind. He supported it, he funded it, and he built it. At the opening of one of the, I think it's the Tumor Dam project uh, in the 50s, he said this, in a period in which we in Australia are still, I think, handicapped by parochialism, by a slight distrust of big ideas of big people or big enterprises, this scheme is teaching us and everybody in Australia to think in a big way, to be thankful for big things, to be proud of big enterprises and be thankful for big men. Well, Menzies was a big man, but there's not too many big men on that side of the parliament. Just broken promises, one after the other. Debt, boats, education, and now the NBN. We've got a prime minister who doesn't understand how important the NBN is, how important this infrastructure is. He's described it as, quote, essentially a video entertainment system. In the Washington Post, in the Washington Post only a few weeks ago, he called it wacko. But he's also described himself as the infrastructure prime minister. Now, if you're going to be the infrastructure prime minister of Australia, then you need to build the infrastructure of the 21st century, the infrastructure that Australia needs. And guess what? That's what this Members is. Not in this seat. That's, what, that's what the NBN is. It's quintessentially the infrastructure of the 21st century. And you can't be the infrastructure minister, you can't be the infrastructure prime minister unless you're investing in building the biggest and most important infrastructure project in Australia. Now today, Paul Keating is visiting parliament for only his third time since he retired. And Paul Keating, like Menzies, knew the importance of the big calls in government and getting the big calls right. It was his decisions that set Australia up for a staggering 20 years or more of uninterrupted economic growth. In large part, Paul Keating built modern Australia. He built the Australia that we are living in today. And the big decision that we need to make today is whether we're going to build the infrastructure that we need for the next century or just for the next few years. Our responsibility, Deputy Speaker, is to govern not just for this generation, but for the ones who follow. The pace of change and the challenges ahead demand it. And there is no better example of this than the National Broadband Network. Menzies knew it, Keating knew it, and we know it. But this government obviously does not. Today, they have made a very big mistake. They have betrayed the trust that was put in them by the Australian people. And for that, you can be sure they will be judged very harshly. Yeah.